Time to have a look at the stayers and we move to the Gold Cup. We've got last year's winner back. We're going to have a look at that horse in action, but it wasn't a winning performance from Order of St George. We're having a look at the Kipco Long Distance Cup on Champions Day itself. Winner. Yep. Second. Second. Third. They're, they're all in front of him at this point, aren't they? And there is Order of St. George, who eventually finished in fourth. But he didn't really give his running for whatever reason on this occasion. Second think... was Quest for More and third was Simple Verse. And as you say, the, the free sweating Order of St. George was a touch disappointing on this occasion. Shall we, we touch with the winner? What went right for Sheikh Zayed Road in this instance? Well, you can see he's a little bit ungainly in the way that he goes about things. But we know that he's a horse with a lot of talent. And I think that he was a horse that was just suited by how this race went in many ways. And... He shows a good attitude late on. As I say, he's got a little bit of an ungainly way of going about things at times, but um, he scraps and there's nothing wrong with his attitude in this race. So this is a good performance from him, but you can see that these horses, they're not separate, separated by a great deal, and that is despite the fact that Order of St George is running a bit below his form there. I think we both felt that he was probably over the top by that point. He got a bit worked up and warm before the race. He'd had a long, hard season and maybe the edge was just off him by this stage. We talk about Aidan O'Brien pinpointing races for his horses, training them to the minute for a specific race. Do you feel that's what happened with Order St George in the race we're previewing last year in the Gold Cup? He was trained for that race. Anything that happened subsequently was technically a bonus. I mean, of course, he, he ran brilliantly in the, the Prix de l'Arte Triomphe itself. Mm. But, but is that a fair assessment of his season last season? I think it is. I think his target was always the staying prize, the Ascot Gold Cup. And, and it's a race that they have in the past had um, horses that have come back and, and racked up sequences in it. So I think that um, that is what they'll be looking to do with Order of St. George. And I think they will be able to do it. We've mentioned already in the programme that he is a horse that's got a, a unique blend, really, of being a high-class middle-distance performer. You mentioned that third in the arc and also the ability to stay very well. Last year in the Ascot Gold Cup, he made that same move down the outside, having made, met some trouble in running, and he really stormed to the front on that occasion. Uh, he saw his race out very strongly, so he's got that high-class middle-distance ability, but he's got all the stamina in the world for this kind of test, as we saw in the race last year. There have been musings in the past. I remember in the build-up to this meeting last year about really quick ground for all he has won in it, perhaps not suiting him ideally. Is that something in the back of your mind? Because, of course, it was, there was juice in the ground when he won this race that we're looking ahead to last year. A lightning quick surface, any concerns? Or is it is it never likely to be lightning quicker for the Royal Meeting? Well, they'll have watered. It, it's going to be quickish ground. I think we're set for warm weather and, and a dry week. So it, it probably will be quick. But it wouldn't be enough to put me off him in truth. I think that he's just got the class edge on his field. That piece of uh, video that we've seen, um, he didn't show his best that day. The others did. And I think if he's back to his best, I expect he will be, then I think he'll he'll get himself back in front of them. Mm, the horse that did show his best on that occasion was David Simcox, Sheikh Zayed Road, who's looking to go a little bit better this year in the Ascot Gold Cup. Here are his thoughts on his leading charge. We know he stays two and a half miles now, so automatically you're not worried about him getting the trip. Um, he seems in as good a form as ever. Um, he's really expressive. He's really, really well. Um, my head man rides him every day and he's happy with him and that's good enough for me. He's an eight-year-old now, but it, I mean, in some ways, does he not seem that? Is he, is, he, is he still like one of the younger horses in the yard? Or can you tell as a horse progresses and as he gets older, he gets that, that bit more experience? Are they a bit mentally tougher as an eight-year-old, potentially? Um, mentally, he's, he's very good, but he's never been at what I'd call over-raced. He, we've kept him to sort of six races a year. Um, and, you know, he, he still shows the same you know the, the same willingness and he's still got the same appetite and you know while he continues to do so we'll we'll continue with him we will see the third running of the commonwealth cup this season it's brilliant a brilliant addition to royal ascot and very well received we've seen some excellent winners so far we could well have another top top three-year-old winning it this year and we're going to have a look at the pavilion stakes because two horses Plus more, perhaps, going forward for the Commonwealth Cup here. Uh, one of them near side in the Godolphin blue is Blue Point. And on the right of shots in the red and yellow is Harry Angel, who will now also run in the Godolphin blue, Chris. Yeah, and they're first and second here in the pavilion. And Harry Angel looking to give Blue Point some weight on that occasion. He runs very well in behind him. Love the way that Blue Point travels through this race. It's all very comfortable for him, isn't it? He does it more easily than, than Harry Angel on this occasion. But... Harry Angel still runs extremely well, and we've seen him come out at Haydock since then. 
and I think he broke the track record, certainly caught a very fast time, and he was very, very impressive on his next start. And they'll be off levels when they go forward in the, the Commonwealth Cup it, itself, of course, Harry Angel giving way to way to, to blue points in this instance. Any worries about track for, for Harry Angel? He's perhaps not been at his best at two starts at, at Ascot for differing reasons, but we saw Blue Point was there. Mm. Would you be confident of, of Harry Angel reversing that form back at Ascot? I wouldn't be confident that he would, would but the track wouldn't be the reason that I'd, I'd say that he couldn't. So the, the track, to me, isn't too much of a concern. I think he's run very well there. And what we saw differently there as well, between the, the Harry Angel performance there and, and the one most recently at Haydock, was the style of run. At Haydock, he went out at his own pace. He blitzed clear of them. Mm. Whereas in there, he didn't see quite so much daylight. He was tucked in. How do you think they'll approach a, a Commonwealth Cup with him? Well, I would think that if they do what they did at Haydock, it'd be harder to pull off in a Commonwealth Cup at Ascot. Um, I think probably those tactics that we've just seen would be better for him. But what he's got to do is is match the way that something like Blue Point travels um, through the race. You could see there that mm. Blue Point did that a little bit more easily. As you say, Harry Angel was carrying the extra weight, which might have accounted for that to, to some degree. Ultimately, I don't think that there's a massive amount between those two horses. I think they're quite closely matched. And they've got to beat a certain unbeaten son of Scat Daddy, who won at the Royal Meeting last year, won the, the commentary last year. What about Caravaggio? How good could this horse be? He could be exceptional. Um, I think he's the he's the bigger problem for the other two, yeah. really. I, I think he'll be very hard to beat, in a sense. He's he's unbeaten in the five starts. He, As you mentioned, he's got the Royal Ascot form in the Coventry last year. And he was wildly impressive that day. And again, when he won on his most recent start at Nace, you couldn't help but be really taken by that performance. It was um, a, a, a blow-away performance in many ways. He clocked a very good time under the conditions and he's just going the right way all the time mentioned it already as well connections that very rarely make mistakes and they'll have him there in top form i'm sure one of the fastest horses that aiden o'brien has seen at home the trainer has said quite some comments from aiden o'brien that is our look ahead to the commonwealth cup the phillies take center stage a three-year-old phillies in the coronation stakes and it's winter's chance to shine in the height of summer at the Royal Meeting, we're going to have a look at the 1,000 guineas and this sensational performance, really, from Winter. Uh, but equally, we'll just pick up the second, who has gone on to finish second in an Oaks, that is Rhododendron. Wayne Lorden got off this day and said, she was a simple ride, she did everything I asked her. She travelled, she quickened. I suppose you couldn't say the same about Rhododendron, given the trouble she found. First of all, did it make a difference, Chris? Uh, it made a difference. Whether it made a difference to the outright result, I'm, I'm not sure. The thing that makes me think that is the way that Winter was so impressive in Ireland on her next yeah. start. And she's clearly high class and very progressive and she hasn't been with Edna O'Brien for all that long. So um, I think this is the impressive part of the race. She travelled well, but she, she shows a nice attitude. She picked up well when she was asked to go about her job and, and she's well on top, really. It would have been quite close between the pair and we've seen Rhododendron up in trip. Um, probably outstayed at, at Epsom since then, but we know that she's high class as well. So that looks a really strong piece of form. For all that it would have been closer between the two, the two would have still been well on top of the rest. Mm. And uh, Winter is surely going to be very hard to beat. Would you have any question marks uh, about her uh, going around a turn at Ascot or anything like that? But we have to wait and see where she's drawn. It can, if it's a big field for a coronation, have an effect on the race. But... What I'm trying to get at, is she bomb-proof in your mind or not necessarily? Um, none of them are bomb-proof, are they? But I would say that she has got outstanding claims coming into the race. It, it, I, at this stage, we're not sure what the opposition is going to be. We know that she's going to turn up. Mm. Um, what will the depth of opposition be? Uh, a couple of horses that are in behind her might well take their chance against her again, but there was no obvious reason to think that they're going to come out and reverse the form. And I don't think we've seen any other form lines that would really scare the connections of uh, of, of uh, winter. And what we see with a dominant performance like that is given the other races, given the, the Commonwealth Cups and the jerseys, some of them might well decide to, to come out and just drop back in trip because they're, they're not convinced that they can go and reverse that form with winter, given the dominant display there. And in particular, as you say, franking that form with such a dominant display over in Ireland. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. She was so impressive in Ireland on her next start. So... She's she's done it back to back. Obviously, it's a, another run, and how long can they hold their form for? And all, all of the usual concerns. But I think you've just got to assume that she will show her form again. If she does, 
hard really to see anything lower in your colours. And we saw a, a standout filly last year from the Cornwall team in the form of Minding, who probably proved to be at her absolute best given the, the, the two performances in Britain over a mile at that trip. Is this a, a filly of that ilk, a, a standout mile of filly? Is she as good as the filly we saw last year, do you think? Um, she's she's probably not too far away. She's definitely very, very good and um, haven't thought about it as a direct comparison between the two. But I know that I think she's the best of the milers around at the moment yeah. amongst the fillies. Yeah, she looks absolutely superb. That is our look at the Coronation Stakes. That is our look at winter. The last Group 1 contest of Royal Alaska is the Diamond Jubilee Stakes. That is which we turn our attention to now. And the form line we're going to have a look at is the July Cup from last year. It was won by Lamato dropping back in trip. This was a dominant performance, Chris. Yeah, he's over on the far side at the moment. He ends up towards the, the near side as he drifts right late on. But he was so impressive on this occasion. He uh, hasn't... Um, gone on to quite match this level of performance since but he ran very well at York in his next start and he's had the odd excuse along the way and this I think this is the best that we've seen him so far this was um, a real hallmark moment for him at, at this point of his career what what was perfect for him on this occasion that he hasn't had subsequently um, I think everything went right and he had the right ground he handled the track extremely well and he was just at the peak of his powers at that point um, everything sort of came together for him to run out a dominant winner there he is. He finishes first. I'll number him, you name him. That's Sedouar in second. Quite reflection in third. So a Commonwealth Cup winner uh, in behind who had high class form. There's Profitable in yeah. fourth. Uh, that's Washington DC over in fifth. Then you've got Eastern Impact who finished sixth. Then Magical Memory in seventh. All these horses have got real high class top level form mm. aside from just this race. And look at what he's done to them. He's blitzed a field of proven group class sprinters. So... Can he get back to that form? There was a lot of talk about uh, the um, conditions in Dubai for him and that he had an un unenjoyable experience on that occasion. And his his owner, really, uh, as part of his connections, has gone to a real extent of trying to get rid of that from his memory completely. There's going to be a change of rider. Yes. Everything's going to be different for him. And if that works, then and he gets back to the July Cup form, then he's, he's surely going to have a huge chance in this. He will get his ground, it seems, at this yeah. stage. He's likely to get his ground. We talked about magical memory there. Now, magical memory chased home a horse called Tazleet last time. What about his... Is he the new kid on the block? Because he was once sort of as possibly a guineas horse. He's got a similar sort of profile to a Muharar who won this race. He was talked of as a guineas horse, came out and won a, a Greenham for all Tazleet's was actually run on, on the weather at Chelmsford because Newbury was, was um, too wet that day. But... Is he the new kid on the sprinting block, Tazleet? Well, he, he he is that. Whether he's going to be the new kid that comes and seeks to dominate, well, seek to dominate, whether he, he manages it or not, I'm, I'm not sure. But he's definitely on the up and he's got some really strong form and he's with a yard that you think he'll that they'll still get more out of him. So he's definitely an interesting runner. But I think he's got a bit to prove to get up to the level that these are at. That's not to so say that he won't get there. And Chris thinks he's perhaps got a, a bit to prove. Let's hear what his trainer, William Haggis, thinks. He's the most likeable horse. He, he'll lead the string, he'll lead gallops, he'll sit behind. He's, he's, there to, he's, a very, he's not very big, but he's all heart and very genuine. And he is only four and he's up against some exposed sprinters. He's only had 10 lifetime starts. Are you of the belief or the feeling that there could be more to come from him? Yes, I do. I hope so, but I think so. And is that something he's been showing you or just something no, that you, you think I, might I develop? I think now the poor horse has finally... Uh, shown the trainer what he's capable of doing at what trip and what ground and uh, he may benefit from that but uh, I've noted it now. That's our look then to Royal Ascot. You got me excited Chris. Well there's a lot to get excited about to be honest Tom. Um, a fantastic week of racing and so many different points. You're probably going to ask me for a highlight race of the week or something that I'm yeah, looking forward well, to most. There's loads of it. One race though that you wouldn't miss, that you couldn't miss no matter what. I'm struggling to name one, really. Uh, I'll give you two, Go on. a bit of a cop-out. Uh, the Prince of Wales is hopefully Highland Real turns up in that because I think it would make it a really great race uh, between Jack Hobbs, him and Ulysses, who offers that progressive element, a, a little bit of the unknown still there. And the Commonwealth Cup that has been a massive success since it was added to the programme. And in Caravaggio, we've got an unbeaten speedster that I think has got lots of people very, very excited, including, as you mentioned, his trainer. 
Chris, thank you very much for your time. What a five days at Royal Ascot we have in store. When you next see us, we'll be looking ahead again to Ascot, but to the King George meeting and hot on the heels of that will be our look ahead to the Goodwood Festival. That's it from us. Enjoy Royal Ascot. <laughs>